guys and welcome to Feywood. So this is where I start to embellish the neck corset. This is the part I feel much more confident with um, because obviously I've done a lot of embroidery beadwork over the years. I really wanted to bring into this piece some um, beautiful jeweled bits and really keep that uh, dragon theme. I had this very nice piece of lace that was um, designed basically for going around the neck collar of a piece. Uh, sort of if you were creating something that needed some um, embellishment around the neck and so its shape was perfect for using for this because it it naturally sort of curved around the neck a little bit so I could easily sort of encourage it to bend around and attach it in place so I made it so that it was um, symmetrical then I glued on this dragon eye I got these dragon eyes from eBay and I showed them in a haul recently as well. Uh, they were just pretty reasonably priced cabochon uh, dragon eye things. There was all different types and I thought the yellow one, the yellowy red one suited it the best. I decided then to surround it with these um, gold coloured uh, square beads. I'd say they're they're a four millimeter square bead. I've had them in my stash for the longest time, so it was great to be able to finally pull them out. Uh, then for the points that happened on the decoration of this neck piece, I used those uh, Czech uh, sew-on cabochons. Now I've talked about these in, I think a couple of videos, I really like them. They're an easy to use, smaller shaped cabochon that you can actually sew on so it's nice and um, strong. I can totally see myself getting some other colours of them because I've, I've really enjoyed using them. Now I've got a ton of Swarovski crystals in my stash so I used these um, foil back, I think they're about 5mm uh, sew on stone and dotted them around the place. But at the bottom of each point I used the Czech um, cabochon shape because I really liked the look of that so to keep it consistent. So I've used a lot of different gold and bronzy tones. I didn't want anything too busy. If I use something more contrasting, it uh, adds a lot more busyness because there's that added contrast that wasn't there before. So if you're wanting to, because there's a lot happening in this pit, in the costume, I really wanted to keep the overall look uh, more simplified, just purely by using colours that were uh, similar so that they don't stand out too much. So I've used different gold and bronzy tones with the beads that I've chosen for doing around the neck. And all of the beadwork I'm doing right now, this will all be around the neck area of the neck corset, with the eye being right in the centre front of the neck. Now I thought these beads were perfect. I'm fairly certain they're a Czechoslovakian or Czech, sorry, um, pressed glass bead. And I've had them in my stash for the longest time and just waiting for the right project to use. And they just gave a really nice edge and sort of like a raised smooth edge to the um, shape of the lace. So I quite liked using them in that way. A lot of the beads I used were actually uh, sort of a matte metallic colour. 
And I think that's because I like the way that mirrored the actual um, material. It was a metallic, but it wasn't super shiny. It was somewhat matte in colour. So the beads mirrored that. I love these. These are Swarovski crystals in a, a um, opal greyish colour set in a uh, brass setting and beautiful, beautiful stones. Um, they were selling them for a discount for bulk packs. I think it was on um, Fire Mountain Gems way back when and I've just loved using them. They're a really unique colour and it just goes really well with these gold and bronzy tones. It's a slightly different colour but it does pick up on those warm golden tones and those golden tones almost look lost in that opalescent of the stone. Just beautiful. Now I wanted to use a 14 millimeter Rivoli Swarovski crystal and I thought the best way to do that was to sew a uh, peyote bezel for it. Um, now if you ever wanting to do a peyote bezel for a Rivoli just look it up on on Google and it'll give you the um, peyote count. So basically it just you just need to know the count number for the peyote stitches when you're doing different size Rivoli bezels. And once you get the count right, the technique's the same. But having that peyote stitch there gave me something to anchor to the neck corset. So I did that first and then as you can see here, I'm using those peyote stitches to then sew this stone into the um, neck corset. So I'm basically doing a stitch going through the, the um, Delica beads and then sewing back down through the leather again. And I do that a few times all the way around to make sure it's anchored from various points in the Rivoli. I thought it would be really nice to use these Czech uh, little stud beads. Now I showed these in a haul recently as well. I really like the way these look and it added a bit of um, grounding of colour I guess as well. So with this material there's definitely your bronzy tones, your gold tones and then there's this warm brown chocolatey tone as well and these little stud beads pulled out that chocolatey tone as well from the material and just added a nice little contrasted arc of colour around the Rivoli. And just for something a little bit different, I added um, a more intense spike. Again, it's a Czech bead. And I showed these in a, in a haul as well. These are these lovely metallic matte sort of uh, spike beads. Fantastic beads. I wish I could have got more and they weren't so expensive because <laughs> I really love them. But I thought it re would be really cool to have one on either side of these other little stud beads. slowly working up this design as I went and as I was going I thought you know I really want to do an, a bit of a seed bead edge work to some of this um, lace. I didn't want to really fully cover the lace so I was sort of taking my time and deciding which design elements to use as I went along but as I did some of the crystals I knew I, knew I wanted a bit more uh, definition just to the main um, outline of the lace 
but I didn't want to do anything internally to the lace. Mainly just because I liked the uh, the the color and texture and the um, difference of the leather versus the lace. And I didn't want to fully cover that with beadwork. Uh, now I got these really cool um, glass beads from Spotlight. Uh, they're sort of like a speckled bead. They've got this really amazing texture and what I did was I put a Swarovski 5mm uh, foil backed um, crystal on top of it so that it really popped and you could still see the glass bead underneath because it, it was larger than the size of the crystal. Just gave a nice textural element to the piece and I like doing this. It's, it's called a stop stitch so it's using some sort of little bead at the end that's a stop bead for the rest of what you're sewing on there and it's usually only two to three beads and you're sewing back down through the beads again but only once through that end bead so that it acts as a bit of an anchor to the rest of it holding it in place. Now I figured it was a dragon costume and I wanted it to be like friggin badass like dragon armor so what better way to do that to, to stick a whole bunch of bloody spiky beads on there so I used every single spike bead that I bought and I showed them in that same haul would have loved to have more but they weren't the cheapest which I, I mentioned in that video so I just tried to use them strategically and really put them where they where they count and I figured the best way they count is to put them in spots where they stick out and one of those spots was on uh, one of the sleeves. So I had, um, with this neck corset, the way it was designed, it's got one long sleeve and one cap short sleeve. And the capped short sleeve, I figured was the perfect spot to put a shitload of beads and have the spikes really stand out um, and look really cool because there was there's gonna be a lot happening on the other shoulder which you'll see in a future video and if you've been to the Goblin Ball you've already seen but for those of you watching the progress I wanted some elements in there that were really cool because I knew that I was going to be putting some other things on the other sleeve totally cover this whole thing with either studs or spikes and it, that would be really awesome and honestly if I had more of them I probably would have done that myself. I ran out though and I didn't really have a lot of time plus I didn't want to spend crazy amounts of money on these studs because they weren't cheap so again as I mentioned I just put them sort of strategically so what I tried to do was put them right on the top of the sleeve so that they stood out and then to start to create a um, symmetrical outline of spikes so that way I could fill in the other areas with other elements um, and have the spikes be the hero but not have to fill the whole thing out with spikes.
so you can see I'm sort of creating a bit of an edge to the cap sleeve. I ran out of spikes so I thought it would be cool to have something that really created a nice edge to the cap instead. So this is basically it for now because the next section is um, there's a fair bit happening and that'll be in a separate video. So I hope you're enjoying seeing the progress of this costume. I really think it's my best costume to date. Um, subscribe if you want to see where this ends up. And I'll see the rest of you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.